Hey everybody, Brian here. Today I am in Islands of Adventure at the Universal Orlando Resort and I am on Marble Superhero Island. Now this is an island that has a fun story that is also Disney related and two of the best rides. In fact, two of my top five rides are here, although that's a different list. One of them is zooming around behind me and that is the Incredible Hulk, which is where I am starting this tour. This is the most thrilling of Universal's rides, and that's saying something. It goes over and under the sidewalk here. It goes out over the lagoon for a little bit, and it has several inversions, and it's pretty much the first thing you see as you turn towards Marvel Superhero Island. Now, what they did with the Marvel stuff here is stick very closely to the comic book look of it. Even this directional sign right next to me here has the big boom with the rocks on it, like you would see in a comic book. Now the story here, that Marvel, before they were owned by Disney, signed a theme park rights contract with Universal that's basically in perpetuity. So Disney cannot use any of these characters in Walt Disney World because it is too close to Universal. The contract has a radius bubble saying how far away you would have to be to use any of these characters. Now, Disney can get around that a little bit because not all characters were included in it. Unfortunately, the Fantastic Four were, as you can see, a few of them up there. Well, minus the Human Torch, who's uh, over that way a little bit. But that is the Fantastic Four Cafe. Just a simple like pizza, pasta, stuff like that. I turned left here after I went under the Hulk. I'm still kind of right next to the Hulk, going towards the Storm Force Acceleratron. Acceleratron? There goes Hulk again. So angry, that guy. But because not all the characters are used here, obviously Hulk, Spider-Man, you'll see in a minute. So those are out for Disney, at least on the East Coast. But something like Guardians of the Galaxy, who were never used here, can be used, which is why they're building a Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster in Epcot right now. So over here, this is the entrance for the Hulk ride right here with that really, really awesome looking statue of him holding up a car, about to throw a car. You can never really tell with Hulk, can you? And then here, this is the Storm Force Accelotron with Storm from the X-Men on it. X-Men are another one now that Disney might have to dance around as I'm recording this. It sure looks like the buyout of Fox is gonna go through it. So they are going to get all the rights to those characters as well. It is fairly early in the morning. It's only about 10.20, but there's basically no wait for the uh, Storm Force. And it makes sense that there's not much of a wait. The Storm Force Accelotron is basically teacups uh, with slightly crazier music and might go a little faster, it's hard to tell. I certainly can't do that ride, that's for sure. Over here are the lockers for the Incredible Hulk. One of the things I find a little annoying with Universal is that they don't make, they don't allow you to bring bags on basically any attraction that is even remotely equipped. Uh, now the Hulk makes more sense. This is too crazy to have a bag on. But something like Escape from Gringotts or The Mummy, don't have any inversions. There's really no reason why you can't take a bag on there. I mean, Disney lets you bring a bag on Rock and Roller Coaster for Pete's sake. But, but for Hulk, they go a step further. They go, I mean, you can go through a metal detector so you do not have anything in your pockets. No cell phones, no keys, not a camera, nothing. Um, things have come out of people's pockets and fallen. And because it goes over the walkway, they just can't have that. So this one makes a little bit more sense. But I figured I'd talk about the policy because I was walking by the lockers and I wasn't passing anything interesting. Here is the front of the Fantastic Four Cafe. This side we have just some snack stuff, popcorn, candy with the Silver Surfer up there. The arcade here is apparently run by the Kingpin, which, you know, oh, and they do, they do have some character meets here, which unfortunately is another thing Disney can't really do with these characters. Again, why you see the Guardians of the Galaxy so much. Here is a very cool Doctor Doom Green Goblin meet. Some of the characters look great. Some of them, yeah. Um, so let's walk in. Here is the store. Professor X is up there. 
manning the store. Let's take a walk in the store, see what kind of merch they sell over here in Superhero Island. As you would expect, Marvel toys. You've got stuff from Iron Man, Black Panther, Hulk. They sell coffee mugs, personalized coffee mugs with Spider-Man on them. Oh, these are really cute. Oh, little stuffed Black Panthers. $17, it seems high. Deadpool stuff, another thing that is probably going to come in the Fox style, but obviously most likely can't be used. I'm not sure what the rules on Deadpool are going to be. Same with Black Panther. I have a feeling they probably weren't in the original agreement here because they just weren't popular characters. All the Green Goblins running around the street now. They moved down there. Oh, sparing children. Generally being the Green Goblin. The uh, team member in that outfit is having a good time. All right, now down here, through this very, through this very cool entrance, we are going towards Dr. Doom's Fear Fall. That is that big tower, and it is a pretty simple drop tower, as you have no doubt seen before, but. Now I will say, while I've always been a fan of comic book properties, mind it is also a tower that shoots you up. So you get shot up and down in this one. Not sure what those are called. I always called them bounce towers because you're basically just bouncing back and forth. But I was saying, I am a fan of comic book properties. I read some comic books uh, when I was younger, mostly X-Men, X-Force, stuff like that but I don't know a lot of the details. So I'm sure there are a lot of details here that I am missing. Not sure if this is any, this uh, there's just an armored car with a safe kind of hanging over it. You can hear people banging away inside. This is more of a villain street here as witnessed by Dr. Doom himself up there. Wait time is 30 minutes right now for that. Again, it is 10.30 on a Sunday. Um, not a particularly busy day, but that's a pretty decent time for that. that. Those types of rides just load very slowly. One of my favorite characters, uh, comic book characters over here, of course, Wolverine. I know I am not alone in that. Um, in his more classic yellow and blue costume. Not really the ones they use in the movie. Here is another shop. Looks like they sell more villain stuff in there. I saw some Venom t-shirts, which is a Spider-Man villain and um, a separate movie that's going to be coming out pretty soon with Tom Hardy. Uh, the trailers look interesting, I'll say that. Um, this is a continuation of the same shop here, Five and Die. Again, up here we have more. There's the Goblin throwing his pumpkins. And here is the man, the Spider-Man, Mr. Spider-Man himself. The amazing Spider-Man, definitely, and this is another one of the best attractions here at Islands of Adventure. It is a simulator, but it's a simulator on a track. So you are going through parts of the city, you move into different rooms, and then there are screens that simulate, you know, falling and all sorts of stuff. Um, it's, it's a very inventive ride, very cool. Back here across from, uh, one of the things I like with Islands of Adventure, you, if you kind of walk towards the water, sometimes you'll find interesting things. Here they have these, um, I don't know, they look kind of like surfboards. They obviously have lights in them for nighttime. Obviously it is not nighttime, so. But over here we have, you know, Fantastic Four, some of their villains. It's Galactus, I think, up there. Again, and more Fantastic Four, Captain America, Iron Man. Oh, Black Panther is painted on here. Uh, so maybe they can't use him. Uh, Thor. Some other people. Hawkeye was in there. Oh no, no, no Hawkeye attraction in the park. We have the, some of the X-Men, Magneto, Cyclops, Jean Grey. There's Angel, I think. So, and then actually out further along the water here, there is more. It actually goes pretty deep over here, as you can see. And there is nobody over here. I mean, 
for good reason. There's nothing to see over here. I don't remember if they ever tried to do a nighttime show here at Islands of Adventure, but if they didn't, they seem to have prepped for one because there are these little like outcroppings in a couple of these islands. There, there is nothing out here and nothing really to see except a very nice view across the water. There is Hogwarts, some cranes building the new Harry Potter Forbidden Forest coaster. You can kind of see in the Hogsmeade Mythos restaurant. There is Seuss Land and back to the Hulk there. But if there was more shade out here, these would be great areas to just come and relax for a little bit. Unfortunately, there's not a lot. There are some light trees like this one I'm walking under now, but they don't really seem to shade the benches that are here. I guess that was a message from a criminal to other criminals about a hairy crime-fighting freak. Interesting, and that's why I'm, I'm starting to like Islands of Adventure more the more I visit it. Um, because it, it, on the surface, it looks like they kind of cheaped out and they just stuck a bunch of pictures of superheroes on the buildings. But as you walk around, you kind of find more and more stuff like that that's a little bit more hidden away. And here is the Captain America diner. There's Cap right back there. And here they serve, you know, burgers, chicken sandwiches, chicken fingers, stuff like that. Again, not, not the best food. Oh, and speaking of, there is the man himself, Steve Rogers over here, greeting fans. There he is. In a more updated costume than I've seen there where they're actually but and now we are coming to the end this is another shop that Captain America is meeting in front of we have Magneto up there and I, I know I'm not naming all of these people because I don't always remember their names an ice cream storm some bathrooms with uh, I want to say Aquaman, but Aquaman's a DC superhero, so it's not him. Uh, Iceman, I know that one. Iceman at the, at the ice cream makes sense. Whoever the uh, water guy is there, I'm sure you'll be, you're already typing in the comments for me. But uh, he gets to guard the restrooms, which stinks. And, uh, and that's it. We are now at the end of Marvel Superhero Island. And how do I know we're at the end? Because... That giant medallion on the ground says Marvel Superhero Island. Now we walk into Toon Lagoon and this video ends. But thank you very much for watching and be excellent to each other.